The Gauntlet is a hell of a silly film. It's a hell of a lot of fun if you just accept it for what it is. The conclusion is one of the most ludicrous things I've ever seen. Clint Eastwood's character is escorting Sandra Locke's character, who's they're attempting to assist. She's a, a witness in a very important case, and they're trying to the hitman trying to assassinate her, and uh, well, it writes itself. First became familiar with this film via viewing the great Frank Rosetta poster art. I don't know if the film really lives up to it, although. If you want a Clint Eastwood film from the 70s, it's essentially just one of these Charles Bronson shoot 'em ups Well, here it is. There is a sequence of Eastwood and Locke riding away from a helicopter on a motorbike. It's one of the... <laughs> it's one of the most kind of cheap, yet obviously cool things you'll ever see in a film. It's just... It's kind of gratuitous and tasteless, but like, you can't deny it. One thing this film has going for it is a tremendous jazz soundtrack arranged by Jerry Fielding, the musicians utilized being Art Pepper on alt so saxophone, John Faddis on trumpet, and an unidentified orchestra conducted by Jerry Fielding. There was apparently talk during pre-production of converting this into what would have been, I suppose, the fourth Dirty Harry film, but that never came to fruition, obviously. It would have been the first uh, Dirty Harry film that Eastwood would be directing. He directed, he ended up directing the, what ended up being the fourth Dirty Harry film in Sudden Impact in 83. I have to admit, films such as these they don't have all that much artistic merit, frankly. I mean, they are what they are. They're films wherein, you know, it's just the Eastwood action vehicles, more or less. They don't have the substance of a of an outlaw, Josie Wales. It's not a case of, oh, it's Clint Eastwood in the 70s. It can do no wrong. I understand why some people can feel this way, although it's kind of a cop-out, really. Well, the fact is that if you just treat an Eastwood film such as this one, as though you might treat the Charles Bronson films of that era, as I said... Yeah, they're fine. They, they, they are what they are. There's not much to say here. I think this film is... It, it, it's very entertaining and solid for a shoot 'em up Although, <laughs> don't expect the sophistication of some of Eastwood's very finest films as a director, or that he appeared in either. Anyway, if you're so inclined, do view 1957's The Gauntlet. Be aware, though, of what you're getting into.